I'm James, and today we're stepping into the stories behind the software and the people that have helped shape our world. I had a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to fly out to Redmond for the Microsoft 50th anniversary celebration to interview some of the most tenured Microsoft employees, my coworkers, and one of them is Scott Sieber, a veteran whose work has left an incredible mark on our industry. He's helped revolutionize the way that Microsoft software operates on the Mac bridging the Windows-Mac divide long before cross-platform excellence was the norm. He's also contributed significantly to Microsoft Bob, a daring, innovative design to bring a human touch to computing by creating an engaging, accessible interface, and including our beloved Rover Assistant. And that is just the beginning of Scott's journey. So join me as I sit down with him to explore the fascinating stories behind these pivotal contributions. So one, I'm super excited to talk to you because as I look at all the amazing software that you've built and shipped with an amazing team of people, I was in awe, but I actually want to start at the beginning. Is that okay? Yeah. Because you were a Mac developer. I was. Uh, can you talk about your origin story? I'm, I'm curious because I have no idea. What was your origin story going from those early years of building Mac software and processes to being in Microsoft? You did that at Microsoft too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, growing up, I was, uh, you know, uh, at the time I was when the, Ma uh, when Apple introduced, you know, the Apple II, and I convinced my parents to get one of those. And so I was already in the Apple ecosystem. And in, in college, I, I took that even further and I got into their developer program. And so I had, you know, all manner of Macs through their developer program oh. to Mac to, you know, every version of the Macintosh that came out. And so I, I applied here uh, and naturally just gravitated toward the Mac. Yeah. Uh, so it was uh, the Mac mail client. Uh, but, you know, not too long after that, being at Microsoft, you kind of figure, well, I should probably, you know, check out the Windows site. Yeah. And so... Well, how did that go? How did that transition go for you? So it was, uh, um, it was a little glaring. I mean, you know, there was, there's a technical aspect of it. You know, the Mac architecture was, you know, uh, uh, a little bit freeing, and then the you know the 16-bit uh, architecture on the on of PC was was a little bit jarring to get used to. Uh, but my first uh, group was the uh, Bob. <laughs> Bob One, everyone's favorite product, yeah, I believe. And so it was one of my top favorites. Graphical yeah. user interface to graphical user interface. And that Rover, the dog. And what did one Rover? Right? Besides Clippy, my second favorite yeah. mascot here. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, if there was a theme. Uh, you know, during all these years, I think it was, um, uh, actually a couple things. One is this intersection of, uh, hardware and devices mm. with software, um, and also just natural computing. And so, um, I think, you know, Bob was an example of that. You know, you got a picture of a desk and Hey, pull out a quill. Yeah. Do you want to write, you know, pull out the envelope. If you want to do a, an email, the dog comes out, you kind of just naturally, you know, uh, talk about that. And so that that carried over into, um, actually windows XP after, I know, a, a, a few iterations and Rover, the dog was the search dog for, yeah. for windows XP. Um, and the other theme I would say is this, you know, when you look at AI now versus kind of what we were doing back then, a lot, a lot of things were similar in the, in the research. And I'll say things like, you know, I might sound like I'm the data scientist here, but I worked with some really, really smart data scientists and I was the applied, yeah. you know, making that happen. Um, but you know, we had SVMs back then, which would, you know, try and predict a user's intent with that search feature. Um, you know, and today, you know, you just ask Copilot and it just, you know, all that stuff that we wrote back then was sort of automatically just spewed out yeah. in an instant today with that stuff. You talked about quite a few different products that you've worked on to ship on. Do you have a favorite one or a story about like actually how it came to be or a moment from, uh, from actually being able to ship some of these different pieces of software? Um, I mean, the, you know, the, it's, I don't know if it's fair to say there was one thing. I mean, the, the journey is, is kind of, you know, took me all around the company. And, uh, you know, w one thing I would say is I, you know, I have a lot of friends over the years that have left the company and come back or left the company and started something or left the company and retired. Yeah. And I've stayed here yeah. uh, for the entire stint. Um, but I, I feel like I've worked for several companies because yeah. Microsoft is, is so broad that, you know, all the experiences I've had have, you know, um, taught me a lot about you know, different parts of the company. Nick, can you kind of dive into that a little bit more? Like what has been 
that journey and like how do you how does that actually work so i think some people including myself it's like oh, i want to do something else i got to go find another job somewhere else yeah how do how do those opportunities kind of happen you know for me there was kind of these uh rails i would say and and you know hardware was was one of those and so whether it be like the sensor platform or hooking a microphone up to you know the early version of microsoft mail for the mac or yeah or uh you know devices uh you know we worked with the city of bellevue and one small group i was in to you know uh connect their all of their traffic cameras in the city of bellevue oh, wow. to uh you know a model to to count cars and people and bikes um well, these these rails for me were uh, natural computing, and yeah. so, you know, is the computer always going to be a box, a square with menus that you pull down, or is it going to be something you know amorphous that you talk to? And um, and so I kind of gravitate gravitated either through research or a small team that was starting up to do natural computing, or at one point we had the NISD division, which was the Natural Interactive Services division, which was all about you know things that work square and boxy. <laughs> uh, do some research on that and. Um, you know, and then you kind of build a network around that. And so I think that's what gravitated me toward, um, you know, the, uh, the, the things that you hook up to a computer and then how you can use those things you know, naturally. Yeah. yeah. It's really interesting hearing your journey. We were talking beforehand is like, actually, while a lot of people have been talking about AI recently, it's like, actually, we've been doing it for quite a long time. Quite a long. And I think people don't really realize that sometimes those little interactions that maybe they had like a decade ago. Those are kind of like some of the origin points of it. Is there a moment in your mind that you're like, oh, like this is like, this is the thing. Like I remember, for example, like when I sat down at uh, in Visual Studio and I saw IntelliSense for the first time. Yeah. It was like this light bulb. I'm a very visual person. I just yeah. love, I'm a, I'm a mouse clicker. I'm not a keyboard person. I'm not a Vim person. I'm a Visual Studio person. I love my GUIs. Mm -hmm. And so Windows talked to me, right? Visual Studio talked to me. And I had that moment where I just died and you like did it and it just blew my mind. Was there a moment for you like in that you're like, th this is, I can see where this is going. Like, this is the thing. Sometimes it be multiple too. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard, Yeah, you know, and, um, for me, I think it's my, my passion that anchored me in yeah. these things and sort of, you know, when an opportunity arose, I would gravitate toward that. Uh, but seeing it early on and then knowing it's going to be the thing, uh, you know, we have some great visionaries that have that ability. Um, I, um, kind of tend to follow my passion and, and also some good leaders along the way yeah. um, on that stuff. But I liken it to like, uh, you know, if you see the, the replicator on Star Trek, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, Hey, I want some tea and it shows up in a thing. There's tea. Well, you look at like, you know, Amazon one day shipping, right? Yeah. I get on a computer and I ask for tea and then it shows up on my doorstep. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, the start of yeah. the thing. And so the AI, you know, you know, version of that is, yeah, a lot of just, you know, uh, nuts and bolts and wires and hard work at the very beginning to do something natural even before it's time like bob and the graphical user interface yeah. at the time was you know pretty hard to pull off yeah and, magical you know and now it's it's you know some of those things were the right things to do and so you, you know we kept doing them yeah. yeah uh i've been asking a lot of people and you kind of alluded to a little bit how like you know you obviously worked on these ai moments and here i get these questions all the time from everybody in my life like hey, this is like with the direction you're going, but how is actually, have you infused like AI into like your daily, not only just work, but yeah. like life and like, how has that like been for you over the last, not only just like, you know, six, seven year, but like yeah. multiple years. Yeah. Uh, uh, more and more, quite a bit actually now. And, um, I'm not one to say that it's going to replace, you know, you know, everything just snapped like that. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do see the productivity value in it. Uh, you know, if it's, if it's, you know, summarizing a really technical document, that's just too long to sit down and grok. I yeah. love that feature. Or if it's, you know, I'm, I'm in VS code, you know, typing along and it's just, it's getting ahead of me, you know, it's, yeah. it already knows what I need and yeah. it's super efficient to, to do stuff like that. Um, in those models, you know, back in the Win windows XP, you know, that stuff that we were doing with those SVMs, you know, there's just a lot of code that we had to write to pull out the entities and fill out the forms and get that format just right for the user to see and you know, today you just use a, you know, a, a model yeah. and it just spits it out for you. And it just, it's so, it just gets you to that goal, like super fast and it's super efficient. That's cool. So what's kept you at Microsoft and, and through all these years, like what has been, has it been the leadership? Has it been the products? Has it been the people? Has it, you know, what, what keeps you going and working on so many different things? Yeah. It's, um, you know, so I talked about the passion that I have for certain things and they're here. Yeah. Um, and so that, that helps. Uh, the leadership, you know, has been great, you know, to, you know, feel comfortable with that. 
Um, but that's the opportunities are all, all here. I, I haven't felt like I needed to go out and look anywhere else when they're, you know, right here. Yeah. What has you excited right now in this moment and anything could be anything in the entire world. Like what has you most like excited and jazzed? Um, you know, it's, 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 uh, you might sound simple to say AI, but it, you know, and, um, you know, it's like the pat answer right now, yeah. but when I see, you know, uh, how productive you can be to get to that end goal faster with some of these things that are coming out, I'm excited about that, but I'm, you know, in general, across the whole spectrum, like, uh, you know, uh, cures to things, you know, solutions to things faster. I mean, it's kind of boggles your mind. Uh, to think about, you know, some of these computations that have, you know, are too arduous and too long to, to solve that are, you know, solvable now. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's pretty exciting stuff. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking time and chatting with me. Yeah. I'm really excited to see what we do next. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. Yeah. It is absolutely incredible to hear just a little bit of Scott's story and journey. He's been at Microsoft for 37 years and is a principal software engineer in the Azure IoT division. I want to thank Scott for taking a little bit of time out of his day to talk about the past, present, and future and the impact that AI is having on it. Now, of course, I want to thank Microsoft for the opportunity to interview some of my fellow colleagues and to attend the Microsoft 50th. It was absolutely delightful. Now, don't forget, this is just one of the interviews that I did during the 50th celebration. So make sure you like, subscribe to all the things so you get notified whenever I put out new interviews or developer videos here. If you want more stuff, you want to come hang out with me and my colleagues in person and the entire developer community, make sure that you register for Microsoft Build happening this May in Seattle and online. Head to build.microsoft.com and I hope to see you there.